River is, ooh, a nine. Dirty Bird Negranu gets there with the nine on the river. And Doug Polk opts to check. What a genius. Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Little for PokerCoaching.com, here today with another hand from the High Stakes Feud. But before we get started, it's the new year. Happy New Year. We are having a sale at PokerCoaching.com. There have all sorts of classes, interactive quizzes, live private streams featuring many of the best players in the world. If you want to take your poker skills to the next level, get a big discount right now at PokerCoaching.com slash New Year. All right, let's get to this hand. Dale Negreanu wakes it up with the pocket nines and raises it up, playing 200, 400, no limit hold'em, 200 big blinds deep. Doug Polk three bets it with the king jack of hearts, which is perfectly fine and standard. Negreanu puts in the four bet, one, two, three, four, and over to Doug Polk. This is a spot where he pretty much has to call, and that is what he does. If you are confused about any of the post-flop play that these two players have been making, make sure you get your free downloadable heads up preflop charts at pokercoaching.com slash H-U-N-L. There's no need for you to be messing up very common situations. Flop comes giving Doug Polk the super nuts and Dale Negreanu um, a bad underpair. <laughs> Doug Polk checks and Dale Negreanu throws out a small one-fourth pot size bet. If you have been studying along with me throughout the hands that these players have been playing, you should know on this very uncoordinated board, generally uncoordinated board, this is a spot where Negreanu is going to want to bet very small and frequently. As we see here, a 25% pot bet is used basically all the time, 87%, with Negreanu's entire range. Even if his preflop range is structured a little bit differently, if he's four betting sli a slightly different range with slightly different proportions, this uncoordinated board is still going to be bet very, very frequently. When you are looking at some hands that you may want to consider checking, though, if you wanted to have a checking range, you can tell it's usually going to be pocket kings for the super nuts. Some weaker kings, if you do have them, like king six, five, four, three, two, suited. And then under pairs, like queens, jacks, tens, and nines. And that's because all those hands besides pocket kings are pretty good, likely to be best, but if a lot of money goes in the pot, they're not really. So they don't mind checking every once in a while, and as you see, that is the hand Negranu has, right? Pocket nines. Back around to Doug Polk, he has a pretty easy call with his king jack. This is a situation where... He can get away with raising some portion of the time with his best hands because essentially what's happening is when Negranu bets tiny, he's essentially announcing he's betting with everything, which is fine. When your opponent is betting with everything, though, you often want to respond with a polarized raising strategy with your best hands and your draws. And there are some draws on this king 7 2, two club boards, right? Like you see, all of these flush draws in this vicinity are opting to check raise some portion of the time. Also, some of the ace-x of clubs are check-raising, right? Also, some of the weaker flush draws are check-raising. So, if you want to check-raise with some of your draws in this scenario, you also want to make sure you're check-raising with some of your best hands. And that's going to be pocket sevens, pocket twos when he has it, and then some kings. Notice that Polka actually does have ace-king in his flat calling range some portion of the time, 200 big blinds deep. That is something you want to make sure that you are doing. Um, and then he's going to get to check raise with a few bluffs as well. And the bluffs in this case seem to be ace queen and ace jack. I got to presume they're going to have a club when they do check raise. So pretty cool to see that king jack actually can check raise in this scenario, although it is one of the kings that much, much, much prefers to call because it's a hand that can just easily call down within reason and you feel pretty good about it, right? All right. Turn comes a seven. Doug Polk checks. Negranu has a very, very easy check behind now. Um, whenever you are looking at the GTO strategy on the flop, the hands that are considering checking to begin with in the scenario where you are betting very frequently are very often going to be the hands that opt to check a ton on the turn. And as we see, queens, jacks, tens, nines, and the low king x suited when Negranu has it are opting to check back the vast majority of the time. We see pocket nines are actually checking basically every time. Pretty cool to see pocket kings slow play this super hard. Um, that's just because when you have pocket kings on king 7-2-7, seven, it's kind of hard for Doug Polk to have anything that can reasonably call besides an underpair, and that hand's not going to be thrilled if you bet the turn and bet the river. Also, it's really nice to have some super nut hands in your checking range because that will protect the rest of your checking range. Like, whenever you check with ace high here, 
on the turn, you don't really want to face or bet on the river, right? Because if it checks down and you're sitting here with ace queen or ace jack, you probably win some portion of the time. But if you always face aggression, it becomes a very, very bad scenario. And checking it back with some very, very premium hands like pocket kings makes it to where your opponent can't just get away with blindly bluffing you. Um, notice the hands that really do want to bet, though. That's going to be pocket aces because you beat all of Polk's kings and ace king because, again, you beat all of Polk's kings, right? And then we see just a smattering of bluffs. They're really, the bluffs are kind of convoluted here. We see a lot of random, like, queen highs bluffing. We see some random, like, bottom pairs betting if, if, Polk, if, if Negrano ever has them. We see really just, like, a smattering of the nonsense bluffing here. And this is a spot where a lot of people drastically under bluff. They bet with all of their ace, king, and better, which is kind of common sense. But then they do not bluff with all of the junk, like ace, three offsuit, right? Most people are not throwing out a bet with ace, three offsuit, or jack eight suited in this scenario and that is a big mistake but in this scenario negrano has a very clear check with a very clear marginal made hand we actually discussed this idea of categorizing your hands to sort of infer the general strategy you should be using with that particular hand based on a implementable gto strategy at pokercoaching.com so make sure you check that out at pokercoaching.com slash new year to get a big discount on your membership anyway check check river is ooh. A nine. Dirty Bird Negranu gets there with the nine on the river. And Doug Polk opts to check. What a genius. Let's take a look at Doug Polk's strategy on the river. It turns out King Jack suited should actually bet virtually every time. Why? Well, because whenever Negranu checks behind on the turn, look at his checking behind range, right? It's going to be a whole lot of underpairs, which King Jack beats, a whole lot of weaker kings, which King Jack beats, and a whole lot of ace highs, which King Jack beats. So King Jack is actually a pretty nutty hand here. That said, Polk's not losing all that much equity by checking it. We see King Jack can check some tiny sliver of the time anyway. We also see King Queen and King 10 doing some checking too, which implies you can kind of go either way in this scenario. So this is a spot where Doug Polk should very frequently bet. Kind of like um, Negranu's strategy on the turn. Notice the marginal hands like pocket 10s, pocket 8s. Um, ace queen type hands like the very very clearly marginal made hands are also opting to just check because they want to see a cheap showdown right you want to be betting with your best made hands they're happy to get a lot of money in the pot and your um junky hands that don't really care if your opponent folds interesting to see pocket nines checking the river for doug polk remember it's always important to check your ch or to protect your checking range to some extent over to negranu and this is where he has a decision obviously he's going to bet but my question for you is, how much should he bet? Remember, he doesn't know that Doug Polk has King Jack. In this scenario, should Negranu bet small, like a third pot, bet medium, like two-thirds pot, bet big, like full pot, or go all in for 2x pot? I want you to pause the video and write in the comment section below what you would do in this spot. Okay, did you do it? Going through this active learning process is gonna go a long way to helping you improve your skills. And like I said, at pokercoaching.com, we have over a thousand interactive quizzes where I challenge you over and over and over and over again to make your decision and then get real-time feedback. If you want that over and over and over again to ensure that your skills are consistently improving, make sure you check that out at pokercoaching.com slash new year. All right, this is a cool spot. I think Negranu really has only two options. He, he can either bet Big, like pot, or bet gigantic, like all in. Uh, there was actually a hand previously in this series of hands that I reviewed for Negranu and Polk where Doug Polk opted to go for the giant all in bet here. And Negranu opts to go for pot. Well, let's see what the solver says about this situation. Turns out pocket nines mixes it up between all in and pot. So... If you said all in or pot, you're probably in fine shape. Notice it does bet tiny, a small sliver of the time. But in general, when you have a super nut hand on the river and you don't really block any of the very clearly logical value hands your opponent could have, like a king, going for that gigantic bet is often very, very strong. That also allows you to bluff sometimes. Again, this is what good polarized strategies do. They put your opponent in a miserable spot. Take a look at some of the other hands that are opting to go all in here. We have random ace high, opting to go all in some portion of the time. 
We have random like queen high opting to go all in some portion of the time. Jack high opting to go all in some portion of the time. So really just hands that cannot win at the showdown use the gigantic all in shove as well as pocket nines for the super nuts and pocket kings for the super nuts. And using this strategy is just going to put Doug Polk in a miserably bad scenario. Facing this pot size bet, Doug Polk has an easy call. Nothing he can do here. And um, he actually does call. So, uh, the program here doesn't show it, but he does make the call. And the pot gets pushed over to Negranu. As you see here, Doug Polk cannot even fold a nine on the river, really, which is kind of neat to see. Uh, facing the pot size bet, you do have to be a little bit sticky. Remember, whenever you're facing this pot size bet on the river, you only need to have the best hand a third of the time, right? You're putting in one unit to try to win a total of three units. It's kind of hard to not be good a third of the time with a hand like a king. So both players actually played this hand straight up according to the solver. Besides perhaps uh, Polk's river check, but whatever. Both players played this hand reasonably, but I really wanted to show here that if Negranu on the river only goes pot on the river with this pocket nines, he's probably leaving a little bit of money on the table. And you're going to find that in general... Whenever you river some kind of unlikely slash lucky hand, going for a gigantic bet is often a very good strategy. And if you do have some hands that do get there on the river, realize that you can also use giant bluffs with some of your absolute trash, like in this case, jack high, queen high, ace high. And that's going to put your opponent in a really, really nasty spot with all of their bluff catchers. And the thing is, is whenever they check call flop, check, check turn, check river, most of their range is going to be bluff catchers. So that's going to be it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a like. Click the like button below. Click subscribe and notif notification. The notification bell. That's going to let you know whenever I have lots more educational poker content coming out. Thanks for being here again. Good luck in your games. And I'll talk to you next time. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want more strategy lessons, pre-flop charts, and interactive quizzes, make sure you get your free membership to pokercoaching.com right now at pokercoaching.com slash free. I'll talk to you next time.